Yes, let's bring Dr. Maria Seaman on. She doesn't insult me. Good morning, Pastor. How are you? Good morning. God bless you, Brother Jamal, <laughs> Sister Sherry. God bless you both. Yes. Bless you, Jamal. Yes, we, we need it. We, we need it in this space. But it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. First, let me ask you, um, how, how's your family and how, how are your parents doing? Um, Mom and Dad, we are... We're making do with them. They are both in care. And we as a family are making sure that we cover them daily. So shout out to my sister, uh, Allison, who does an excellent job making sure that our parents every day, family is with them. So thank you for asking. No problem. No problem. And, and um, you know, I, I actually mentioned you some weeks ago on the show. And, you know, I tell people, you know, if for me, it's just about, checking up on people, seeing how people are doing when they're not in your life. And I, I just think that's the right thing to do. And so, um, you know, I, I know you you probably hopefully weren't surprised, but when I reach out every probably once a year to different people, uh, it's just a matter of just, you, you don't hear it from people. You're not in certain spaces. Um, it's not like I could just pop up at Shekinah. Um, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have you in South Florida. So um, it's great to hear that um, family um, is is doing what family is supposed to do. Um, mm -hmm. Before we get into the conversation also, um, is it 37 years of wedded bliss today? Well, Jamal, I tell you, I'm tickled today as my husband and I, we celebrate 37 years of marriage today. I am so excited. Oh, what? That's yeah. awesome. Thank no, you. Sure. Um, no, I was Jamal and I is trying to make through this first year. So, <laughs> you know, thank you for that. <laughs> No, we just went a year. We went a year. But no, I, I was in a conversation at dinner last night and couple been married 14 years and they were saying, yeah, you got to get through that first five. But I, and I'm not joking when I ask you this. What what's what's the secret to it? Or is there a secret? Like, how, how, how does a marriage make it to 37 years? Well, let me say that I think it's quite unique. We started together. I was 15. First mm -hmm. date on Good Friday. Um, got married at 20. I have been through numerous amount of changes. I can tell you only God kept us together until we matured together. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I am is a person of commitment. And when I fell in love with him at age 15, that was it. It was mm -hmm. gonna work if I had to kill him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God bless you. Well <laughs> Um, but folks, giving you a happy anniversary, love in the audience. Thank you, thank you. Um, it, it is a milestone and something that should be celebrated and cherished. Now, let's get into the conversation a bit. Um, every year, there are various reports and studies on Christianity uh, speaking to its decline in terms of numbers. As a preacher of the gospel, how much does this concern you? Uh, very much. Bermuda has changed. I'm 57 years old. My birthday was on Monday. And so I'm a June girl like you, uh, yes. Sherry. Yes. And so therefore I have seen the changing, the mutation, I would even say, of the Bermuda, the culture as it were. And religion, Christianity is a part of that. You know, the key thing, and I'll state it real briefly, is that sometimes our greatest, what we see as our greatest gift or moment can become our most challenging one. And I believe in the 80s, 90s, especially 80s, when we were booming, mm -hmm. I mean, money, you could quit a job 10 a.m. and have a job by 11 a.m. Um, we all of a sudden were endued with money and wealth. And I believe at that point, we started to substitute the wealth of a relationship with God through Jesus Christ for what we could do for ourselves. I've seen it. That's where I believe Christianity now becomes uh, for many an option or no option at all. Mm. And it has changed Bermuda. Bermuda is 20 miles. Uh, as a scientist, I, I look at things a certain way and therefore being a very small uh, microcosm of the world, change happens in Bermuda quick. We just mm. take up stuff. And I've seen that happen to the detriment of our people. Gotcha. And 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 you mentioned um, Bermuda's change. Uh, what, what do you believe is the state of Christianity in Bermuda right now? Like what 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 do you what's the actual state? I would say she's soft. Um, I believe as things have come out of the closet, Christian Christians have gone in, 
and mm. said, let me just be peace. Let me just, let me just be quiet. And mm. that's, that's not the culture. That's not where I was brought up from. That's not my grandparents, my parents. Um, Christianity has made herself become an option rather than the leading voice to proclaim it. I'm a pastor. It's what I do. Um, mm. I believe in the product, you know, and so I'm, I'm all in and I'm in in church and I'm in in public. I'm in whether you like me. I'm in. It don't matter to me. It's mm. what I do. It's who I am. That passion and drive. A lot of it is now what I feel, my opinion. It's in-house. Mm. But now that we've got so many competing uh, cultures, religions, um, thought processes. It's like we've quieted down. Yeah. And I think that's disappointing. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of my concerns, and I think we spoke about it when you were previously on this show, um, and I'm going to use, I'm, I'm going to go into politics for this. So I, I don't want to quote the wrong senator, but I, a Republican senator, senator in the U.S., it could have been Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio, but a Republican senator um, said some years ago that Black people are actually more conservative than they are liberal. But liberalism has used the Black struggle, per se, and Black people to kind of move, other, get other things moving, right? Now, how, let's just answer this, because when, when you were on before, we spoke about how the world has become more liberal. Do you believe liberalism and Christianity can coexist? You see, here's the thing. My liberty, the, the liberalist I am, oh yeah, is only found in Jesus Christ, you see? And so it's liberty or liberalism talked, talked in the safety of a relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So while you can be modern and explore this and that, if it's not in the safety confines as a Christian, within God's word, then you're going to go all over the place and your liberty is going to be your undoing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm sitting back here just taking it all in. Say, <laughs> how good. have, <laughs> yes. How have you evolved as a pastor as the world became, becomes more liberal as you indicated? All right. I, I, I believe God prepared me as a child. Um, First of all, to one of the things my mom told me, I was about 10, 11 years old. She said, Maria, never change who you are to be accepted by people. Never forgot it. So go up, prepare my mind a certain way as a child, literally five, six, observant into technology way back when Nintendo 500. So I was a <laughs> computer person, yeah, computer person back then. And therefore, I'm into technology. Many people don't know that I produce the TV station right here in my home, our home. Mm. That's TV 24. A part of the preparation has to be that with how the world is changing, the church is not caught off guard. When we went to the lock-in or whatever it was for two weeks, our church didn't skip a beat. I did my sermons from my home. We were already into it. So anything that is discovered or used, it's not first for the world, it's for the kingdom. Mm. But the kingdom becomes lazy and used to doing things a certain way. So the world looks like it's cutting edge. I'm going to tell you, no, Shekinah Worship Center is cutting edge. There is nothing we will not try in order to reach people where they are at. I I will say, um, Pastor Samika, I was looking at your background, your audio. I was like, she is sharp over there. <laughs> so I Thank can you. tell. I don't know. She don't know. She. <laughs> well, I know. No. <laughs> but why is Christianity still a necessary part of who we are as Bermudians? You know, I used to go to the community culture affairs breakfast they had for seniors. One of the reasons I loved to go was to read the booklet they had of all the seniors, the couples, the elderly people. If you read their bios, they always had some 99%, some sort of 
statement about faith, spirituality, God. That's our basis. And I believe that when you lose that, you lose the essence of who you are. We wonder why Bermuda changes. I do. We have, we ran for the apple, <laughs> not realize we let go of the go, the relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christianity, even the basic commandments teach you to love others, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So therefore, no matter, and I will use this statement, no matter how much people hate me, don't like me, I can't do that back to them. So I'm not going to curse you off. I'm not going to come against your family. I'm not going to call you names. Why? Because I have the, the Bermudian manners. Hello. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I am a Christian and God would not be happy with me using unkindness. Now, sometimes let me say this, the truth of the word of God that I study, it hits hard. But it's because of the love of God that we want people drawn from the world of sin into the kingdom of light so that one day we may see Jesus Christ. We may experience an eternity in heaven and not an eternity in hell. So that's my drive. I told you she was going to pray for me because remember you mentioned naming, like calling people names and I made code the name of a government. Line. She was basically saying, Jamal, I'm pr this is about you calling the government name. So I I'm, a, I'm not there yet. I'm, 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 I'm a work in progress. I'm a, I'm a work in progress. We're still but, a work in progress. <laughs> but, let me let me just add to to a, a question or a thought and or your thoughts on young Bermudians um, and right now in the state of young Bermudians and young Bermudians and Christianity. Like, how are we working or how is Christianity, your church working on young Bermudians and the state that they're in right now? Yeah. Yeah. Many folks don't know that um, I taught school for 19 years. I've been pastoring now just about 16 years. And so young people are at my heart. Here's one thing that's very important and you know it, it's very tough to bend the branch as they get older. So it's really vital what we do with the little ones. And I am so excited. They are our key focus, one of our key focuses. Now, before the COVID issue, I call it, before that, I was at three schools each week doing two or three assemblies reaching into the children, teaching them the famous poem. I've got to say it. I learned it at age five at Elliot, and I teach it today. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. I have taken that message to Kenya. Now, here, let me say this. I minister weekly to a children's home in Kenya, and they know that poem. They repeat it back to me. And my thing is, I don't want to be doing for Kenya what I'm not doing for Bermuda. Mm. So we've stepped up our game, as it were. And we our youth program is fully back in action. We have about 40 young, little ones who are registered, averaging about 30. So far, I'm going for 50 at least for September. We have youth night. We're going to be having VBS August 8th through the 12th, church picnic the 13th. Now, the big thing is on, on my daughter's birthday and, and one of our elders' birthday out of tribe, we finally, after two years, got government's permission, hello, went through the red tape, put up this children's church tent. God showed me in 2019. He said, I want you to purchase this big tent and get chairs and you're going to have a, because you're not going to build the building. The economy is tight. People ain't got money, but you <laughs> can put up a tent and minister to the children. We're doing it. We blessed the tent just Sunday going. So mm. my aim is to serve. I'm a servant. Mm. All right. I attend every youth night. I, I don't stop because I don't want the people ever think it's about me. It's about the children that we need for Bermuda to be changed. If we don't get to mm. the children, forget it. Well, I always said, I mean, and I, I hate to compare us with um, dogs, but the truth is the similarities are there. But you don't train a dog, you train a puppy. A dog's already an adult. It, it, you have to get them while they're young. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely agree with, with that. I want to just shift gears um, because this is really important uh, part of wh where we are in, in, in the state of the world. One of the comments that troubles me by Bermudians in particular, this comment troubles me, is 
we need to open up like the rest of the world and we need to do this and that. And when people say that, I always wonder what countries are they referring to? But what does that statement mean to you? And we can talk about gaming. We can talk about cannabis. Mind you, I think free up the weed. That's just me. Um, pray for me, I said. Um, oh, bless you. Yeah. Um, and, and also, what, what else is it? Um, the um, same sex issue recently. So those are three things that top of my head. But what, what does it mean to you when, when you hear people saying, um, we need to free up and we need to um, join the rest of the world? When in truth, in truth, some of the most successful, when I say successful financial, financially destinations, I mean, Qatar, you can't even go to, your girl, to the World Cup with your girlfriend and have intercourse because of the laws there, right? I mean, you can go to prison for doing that. So when, when I hear this and I'm like, but well, some of you folks who think Bermuda is so conservative this way and that way are traveling to Dubai and all these countries that you literally could get life in prison for doing the simplest things. But what does that mean to you when you hear Bermudians say this? Yeah, first of all, I've been Qatar, beautiful. Um, let's take the statement, Bermuda needs to open up. In other words, we're saying, especially let's understand in the context of the time that which we live, open up to every virus of every country, be just like everybody. And I'm not talking about the virus. I'm talking about habits. I'm talking about cultures. I'm talking about spirits. Mm -hmm. See, you did something earlier with your survey, you and um, Sister Sherry there. And um, what you did was you showcased how unique Bermuda is. Now, folks, we cannot be unique and be open like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And to me, we have a product here in Bermuda. Look, people actually need the serenity that we are. I'm not, I don't believe Bermuda's boring. Mm. I'm good. Um, I think it's dangerous when we who have what we have are always grasping out here. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it's a psychological statement to generations that we need to go everywhere else rather than investing. We, therefore, we pull in people to work. We pull in people for this. We pull in people not understanding those people come with their habits, their gods, their culture, and Bermuda get washed, gets washed away. So I think it's dangerous to have that open mindset. Now, certainly as a scientist, I'm going to go here. Even when it comes to sexuality, we just say open. What do you mean open? No, closed, closed, closed relationships. Let's be unique. Let's be faithful to who we are. Now, after 37 years of marriage, I, I know what I speak of, all right? <laughs> I think it's very important Bermuda remain Bermuda. And um, if, folks, if you have any questions or comments for Pastor Maria Seaman, please feel free to share. We'll do our best to ask her any of your questions or share comments. Um, obviously, I, I, I want you to take it on. And let me just explain, because I don't need you all. I know how media is taking clips. Jamal said, be this, be that. No. Positive media day. Exactly, positive media day. What, 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 let me let me explain that. When when I say that, I I personally and I put it on um, social media. Um, wish that I had um, been more forceful or involved in trying to get one of my relatives who was going through something to take, um, you know, products with um, THC in it for what I've been told um, they can do to help. I do believe that uh, when responsible, when not abusing anything. Um, it could be helpful. So let me be clear because I don't, I, yeah. I, I got people in my ear all the time. Hey, look, make sure you clarify this. I don't need anyone to go and become an addict and or abuse something and come back on us. Let, so just want to put that out there. Um, Pastor Seaman, now that I hope I've been clear with that. Uh, <laughs> what advice would you give to someone? Um, people are going through stuff, right? Uh, Bermuda economically hasn't even hit the heights of where things may be in three to six months. People are struggling. And at least when I was growing up, and again, I'm, I'm removed from the situation, the church used to be a place for people to turn. A lot of people may not feel that way. They may not feel as welcome. What would you say to someone or people who, who might be going through stuff about what the church can do or what the church does do um, for its members and the greater community? Yeah, thank you for that question. I am a shepherd, an earthly shepherd over a flock called Shekinah Worship Center. I will tell you, 
that not of the people that I have remit over will starve, will lack comfort, will lack love because we are a family. Now in the community in general, people moving away from the church, we've lost that. We've lost that place of refuge. I get folks throughout the year say, hey, pa Pastor Simon, what can we, can, can you help me with this and that? I'm like, who's your pastor? Who's, see, we know the church when we want something. No, no, no. We need to know Jesus Christ, become attached to a family. Mm -hmm. And I always say, Shekinah may not be your place. Get attached to a family church. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that that shepherd, if that shepherd does not take care of their flock, fire them. Fire her. Mm -hmm. We're with our people. We're going to make sure. You know, one of the things, and I think this is so cute, I've got to mention it. Um, I have super seniors, seniors, uh, seniors over 80, and they are on technology because we took time out in the early part, training them, um, showing them, shout out to Chief Trot, um, showing them how to operate because we had to stay connected. I was on um, a song in the night for like 185 days straight to make sure that my congregation and others heard my voice of comfort every night during this uh, crisis. We are family, the family. And folks, we should know in our natural family, when families are strange, who wants to help that relative that could, can't stand you hard-headed, disobedient? Let's get back to our proper roots, our proper cultures, connect with a pastor. We're all not stealing your money, trying to just do for ourselves. No, no, no. At least you're looking at one pastor and my congregation can tell you they know where money they is and where it goes. And so people have lost faith. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to say, you just need to find the right church, have the right conversation. And you'll find out that that pastor, listen, I, this is big. I am responsible to God. The, the congregate, I'll tell you how the congregation they're responsible for themselves. I'm responsible for myself. And then God's going to say, this is how you handle my people. I'm going to get extra licks because I am responsible for the souls under in my remit. So mm -hmm. it's very serious. I take this seriously. And um, I thank God for Shekinah Worship Center and how we're making out. And, and Find one, a pastor. And one last question. Um, as people have moved away from Christianity, have you seen personally that numbers within Shekinah Worship Center have declined or have they increased? Our numbers, I would say, stay steady. Some go, some come, <laughs> but then my international ministry is exploding. I've got a, a mission in India. I've got a church in Pakistan. I've got two churches and a children's home in Kenya. I got a church in the UK and that way it's increasing. What happens is now COVID, I'm going to say this, how much, okay. COVID did some interesting things. It changed the dynamics of a church. There were some people that I relied on in a certain way that now during COVID I don't. And that changed their hearts. Some people's hearts changed. A oh, pastor doesn't need me no more. Oh, she's forgotten. No, we just had to do technology and do things differently. Mm -hmm. And so time changes, connections change. So we're challenged. We stay steady. Youth ministry has increased, and I know God's going to give increase. He sustains everything. What God ordains, God maintains. And so I'm excited about that. So I'm looking for more and more increase. All right, Pastor Maurice Eamon, thank you so much. Um, brought the gospel today, and uh, we appreciate it, honestly. I think um, so often uh, we we only you know welcome people into spaces where um, both everyone's got to be comfortable and i think there's there's we don't we don't move when the that that's the, the situation um you know obviously you mentioned you know some people may hate you um but you don't spew that back and i think we're all entitled to um choose who we want to be around and who we want to listen to and who we want to take in um I mean it. I mean, I jokingly say it when I say I'm a work in progress. Um, I've been through some things with Bermuda, Bermudians government in particular, and trying to get to a space where I don't allow my emotions to dictate um, my, my personal feelings towards certain people. So I, I think there's messages in what you're saying. And one thing I want to highlight in, in, in something, because I think 
when it comes to Christianity, religion, period, um, the word hate is so often shared. Um, I didn't feel anything hateful from you this morning. I didn't feel any, any hate. I felt a person who, to go back to a word you chose earlier, is committed to what you believe and to, to sharing it. So, um, you know, thank you for, for um, you know, trusting this platform to have this conversation. And um, we definitely will be reaching back out to you. There's always something to talk about. Um, Bermuda is, uh, at least from a political perspective, it's an interest, it's in an interesting space. So um, I know some people feel like, uh, you know, the church shouldn't have anything to do with politics, but in truth, our, many of our politics was built by the church. So mm-hmm. um, <laughs> thank you. Um, Pastor Smith, and I, I just want to say once again, happy 30, 37th anniversary to yes. you and um, you. our team and and um, continue to be an inspiration to those who seek marriage in the way that you believe it should be. Amen. Thank you, uh, Thank Jamal. You. Thank you, Sherry. It's been an honor and a pleasure. And anytime I'm busy, yet I always stop to do what I feel God would have me to do. And this has been great. Great way to start the anniversary. Yes. You, Folks, blessings you. abound. Blessings abound. Shout out to my husband. Love you, Pete. Love you. Celebrate. <laughs> celebrate. Amen. We'll be in touch. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Pastor, if you appreciated that conversation, give us a thumbs up, a love, a like.